This is Peebs Gilder coming to you live from Chicago, Illinois, with a special report. We've just received word that the cult cinema podcast B-Movie Mania has released a new t-shirt design that is currently for sale on their website, bmoviemania.com. The new shirt features all four of the self-proclaimed maniacs as cartoons, along with UFOs, the Chicago skyline, and some dope-ass lettering. The t-shirt was designed by artist Johnny K and early reports indicate that the material is super soft and the shirt is available in a wide variety of colors. It also comes in styles suitable for all genders. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, I'm being told right now that you can order your own B-Movie Mania t-shirt by visiting store.bmoviemania.com Dot com, or simply by going to bmoviemania.com. Reporting live from Chicago, this is Peebs Gilder, BMM News. Hello, B-Movie brothers and sisters. This is Jason Hulls, and before we get into today's episode, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you that our own B-Movie, Late Afternoon of the Living Dead, is live on Amazon and streaming free for Prime members. Late Afternoon of the Living Dead is a horror comedy written and directed by yours truly. Crazy Chris Hudson is your leading man, the deadliest librarian in the zombie apocalypse. Paul Brooks and I are also in the main cast. Everyone's favorite B-movie maniac, Mike Hayes, plays several zombies and did a ton of work on the post-production. We released the movie back in 2007, but now we have a leaner, meaner new edit in glorious HD. So do us a kindness and check it out on Amazon Prime, and if you like it, please leave a positive review. It helps the movie get seen by more people because, you know, Amazon algorithm. Okay, that's it. Thank you, and back to your regularly scheduled episode. Attention shoppers, if you want low prices on psycho robots, (laughs) discounted head explosions, and a sexy romp through a furniture store, follow us because we just watched Chopping Mall on B Movie Mania! Chopping ball. I don't know why Welcome it's so funny, but it's very good. Pain. The best of the bizarre. The place I, I, I haven't prepared a quick take. I haven't prepared a rating thing. Yes, it's Let's do it. I've got a quick take. Let's go. Can I, can I just say that I, that I loved how the movie started out as some sort of like crime heist kind of uh, jewelry can, thing? Can, can I just say how much I... He hasn't even done the intro. We haven't even started yet. Hey, 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 can I just say how I love how this fucking movie was? Like, exists? <laughs> it's so fucking good. All right, Mike's all right. quick take. All you gotta do is save it for like 30 seconds. No, I can't! Jay, I can't save it! I'm exploding! I'm exploding right now. Give it to just me. Just talk, Jay. Just go. Okay, everybody, we're starting off with chaos here. I Give think it. it's a lot of positive <laughs> chaos. Everyone's talking about Chopping Mall. I'm Jason oh. Halls, and the other shoppers with me are Mike Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Hudson, <laughs> chopping mall. Do the little horn thing too. <laughs> chopping mall. And oh, shit. Paul Brooks. May I see your identification? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, I know. Just setting up for this, everyone's busting at the seams to talk about chopping oh, mall. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> let's just get to it. Quick takes. Quick takes. Mike, what's your quick take? Oh, my quick take is, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Holes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're you're welcome. I loved it very much. I loved everything about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris. Waitress, more butter. Waitress, more butter. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we have some amazing quick takes this time. Oh, um, Paul, chop till you drop, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and mine is, uh, I dare anyone to find something unlikable about this movie. Yeah, fuck yeah. Hmm. 
So with okay. that challenge accepted. Let me. Well, okay, there might be oh, something, yeah. but not oh, much. Oh, oh, interesting, Paul. Not much. Um, let me give you the quick storyline here for all of the shoppers at home on our home <laughs> shopping B Movie Network. <laughs> hey, buy our T-shirt. Buy our T-shirt. We'll sell you that later. Um, a group of teenagers that work at the mall all get together for a late night party in one of the stores. When the mall goes on lockdown before they can get out, the robot security system activates after a malfunction and goes on a killing spree. One by one, the three bots try to rid the mall of the intruders. The only weapons the kids can use are the supplies in other stores, or if they can make it till morning when the mall opens back up. That was submitted by Lindsay uh, Willett? Willheit? Jay? Yeah? Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little confused. I don't know if I saw like a different movie, but what I saw was a robber breaking into a mall, yeah. him getting apprehended by a kill bot. Mm-hmm. And then it was the end. It, Movie's this over. was a minute and 37 second short film, was it not? <laughs> what you saw, Paul, was actually, it was a little swerve. It was a commercial presentation um, oh. given oh. by Dr. Stan Simon, who his name really doesn't matter because he's just in the beginning. <laughs> um, he introduces the Protector 101 series robots. Trust me, absolutely nothing can go wrong. Now, this is something I thought was was odd. They there were the audience. They showed the audience members as he was ending this little video of them apprehending the the robber. You know, by non lethal methods, I should say. And um, one of the audience members says, "I don't know, Mary. The one in the middle has an unpleasantly ethnic." quality a racism going on in there <laughs> well no i understand listen mr and mrs bland were kind of the highlights of the early part of the film i don't know if you guys really dug into mr and mrs bland um but that was a their name and b <laughs> yes this uh is. their name was mr yes. and mrs bland so there's that as i watched this movie i kind of thought about kind of the backstory of behind dr stan simon and these kill bots and Dr. Simon, he, he, he basically plays out why these are great mall security cops. Um, but, you know, with their, with their sleep gas and their stun guns and stuff. But, come on, these guys are clearly repurposed military hardware. There's no way this was plan A for Dr. Simon. Like, the, the military totally said no to his shit. We're going to go with number five and the short circuit movies. Well, it's true. Uh, yeah. Lightning strikes the computer or whatever, the robots, and in short circuit, obviously, Johnny Five. Yeah, it goes, Johnny Five goes good, and these guys go bad. Uh, and they reverted to so, their original programming. But they do, they still do their job. Like, at no point That's true. At, in this movie do these robots not do their job. Like these, these, these are teens breaking into a fucking place. Like they deserve to die. Like good job. More to Fuck Chris's yeah. point though. Like they were. It was emphasized in the beginning presentation to like the audience members in the mall that they were non-lethal only. They do. They don't kill. But as soon as lightning strikes, somehow they get lasers or something. Well, hey, no. Well, they say they say that they have lasers for cutting through debris. Well, you can't. But, oh, is that what it was? Why do they need lasers in a mall? <laughs> there's a bunch of mall <laughs> rampant mall collapses. Listen, hey, hey, hey! I don't, Chris. I know you have children. I understand you have children, uh, but I believe they're getting about to the teenage years, oh, and yeah. also oh, at that point you'll gotcha. probably start calling them debris as well. So once you understand what a teenage child's fucking purpose is, is to be in the way, and you need a sweet ass pink laser to fucking get rid of it. <laughs> well, well hey, I've got I've got one more question here for everyone is that uh, now we all kind of grew up in the 80s. We went to malls and, and things. And Dr. Dr. Simon says that with these protect bots, this will be sure. the, the safest mall in the state. Does, <laughs> is my memory foggy or just, were malls really dangerous in the 80s? Chris, have you met a <laughs> Cure fan? You texted me about the doors they installed, oh, too. Oh, yeah. The blast doors they closed. Oh, oh, you mean the Star Trek doors that are apparently in this fucking movie? What is with this mall? Yeah, no store actually has windows to the outside, I guess. <laughs> Dear God. Okay, can we talk about every movie? Every movie in the world that has those dumb shit doors? They don't make any sense. Star Trek has Star Trek has solid doors, right, Paul? I and mean, you're the you're a local Star Trek uh, expert, right? These the, have the teeth. doors are just straight, right? There's no like weird teeth, right? 
Uh, it depends. I mean, if you're talking about uh, the original series, yeah, they're pretty straightforward. But if you look at the holodeck doors on the Enterprise D, they got a much more of a shape to them like that. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> it looks futuristic. Looks cool. <laughs> I I actually really enjoyed the opening credits too, which normally we might not talk about, but it's it's a montage of life at the mall. It was just great. Mm-hmm. It really yeah, took it me nice. back. Really great. And did you guys notice that yeah. the diner in the mall was named? Uh, or it's in the diner on the menu. There was bacon crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> there were some good ass fucking store names. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, some good store names, and there were some good like little tidbits, like just little things in there that you pick up on, like. Early on in the movie, right around that that area, there's a announcement that comes on the intercom, and it says something like, "Attention, <laughs> your attention, please, your attention, please. We have a lost child in lingerie, answering to the name of Steve. <laughs> <laughs> answering to the name of Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's that's how that's how you find a child. So I, I don't know why that's funny because a child was lost, and it's very sad. So, so Jay, just to get a couple housekeeping things out of the way here really quick, I don't know if you have this in your notes, but this movie was directed by Jim Winerski, who is a prolific oh, yeah. B-movie director, oh, yeah. and, yes. and this was um, produced by Julie Corman, uh, who is Roger Hell Corman's yes. wife. So Now, okay, so that would explain all the movie posters on the wall in the diner, yes. right? And also, yeah. it also explain how it's better than anything Roger Corman has ever done. <laughs> ooh, ooh, um, take. Ouch. But anyway. Shots fired. But Roger was involved, and, and, and they were, you know, they were doing this um, under the tutelage, in a way, really, of, of Roger Corman. Um, and so they were doing the best they could to sort of make sure that they were making him proud, you know, because he was yeah. uh, keeping a watchful eye on production, as was his wife. Oh man, they did such a good job. Yeah. If he, if Roger Corman was not happy with this movie, he can go fuck himself. <laughs> he was a hundred percent happy with. Like, it. holy shit, this movie's so good. Now, Mike, was this the first time you'd seen this, Mike? No, I saw it back in the day. Okay. Like, I saw it in like probably two thousand two or something. Okay. Like that. Okay. It's the first. first it's the first time I'd ever seen it. I've I've seen it Me on like, video shelves and always wanted to see it, but never quite. It's never so had a goddamn good. Well, I gotta say, holy this, shit. this movie really moves. Like the first kill comes like before, oh, yeah. like right after that montage. We get the first killbot kill. Yep. I, yep. I don't know. Okay, well, well let's talk about minutes, let's talk about in. the inciting incident here. Who who wants that? Oh, I'll take it because it was fucking weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> there is a, I guess you'd say, sort of a security guard who's posted up as, at his security. <laughs> station uh at night i believe the mall has closed at this point it's a it's a stormy night there's some lightning going no, on i don't think the mall's even closed at this point this is when there's it still, might not be closed. Still it's getting it's getting that. ready yeah. yeah it's getting yeah. ready the mall is just sexy they, they haven't un- <laughs> they haven't unleashed the kill bots yet <laughs> the kill the kill bots are stationed up in this security room and the security guard is Looking at some titties and oh. not really paying attention. <laughs> and wait, is he is he really a security guard? Because he's dressed like a lab technician. Yeah, I called him egghead <laughs> scientist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's like a combo of like security slash like high tech scientist. Oh, good, yeah. good point there. Um, but basically, he's distracted by a, a uh, what do you call it? A centerfold, and uh, As we some, all are. some lightning strikes the top of the mall and actually short circuits the computer that is on top of the mall. The, one of the kill bots tears through the titties and fucking like slits his throat or something. Oh my god. Yeah, I gotta like, say it looks so like good. he choked it's... him to death. Or... Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, so I gotta say good. that these, these kill bots are really, really devious because they don't really leave bodies lying around unless it's to like distract someone. Because they get rid of that guy's body somehow. Well, don't they also kind of sneak up on him? Like, like he thinks something's happening, and he turns around, and they stop. <laughs> and like... Yeah, I like that. They're, they have a certain a certain amount of like intelligence oh, to yeah. them. They communicate with each other and stuff. It's great. If I may say, Hudson, would you say these are like modern day Daleks? <laughs> well, I would say that the design of these killbots is amazing, and they're all practical. And it's it's great, and they, you know what they they look better than Daleks. They have treads. They can go up escalators. 
What you're saying is assholes like, I don't know, Paul Brooks or something like that, like maybe should watch Doctor Who because Daleks are pretty great. Daleks are pretty well, great. Yeah, they are great. But the difference between the Killbots and Daleks is that Daleks have a little mutant inside of them, like a little guy, and they're not well, really robots. So Spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> maybe spoiler there are. Well, we don't know. <laughs> hey, you know what? Too. You know what? Commentary comment. Uh oh, guys. <laughs> that sound means <laughs> I just need to let everyone know that I did listen to the audio commentary track for Chopping Mall since I own the DVD and there's an audio commentary with Jim Winerski and the co writer on there. And anytime you hear that sound, that means I got a little bit of uh, audio commentary trivia I love this. for you. Oh my God, I love this. I hope Paul is always with us. <laughs> On the commentary track, Jim Winerski, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but Jim Winerski himself is the voice of the Killbots. No and shit. He says on the audio commentary that he was doing a, quote, kind of a Battlestar Galactica thing. Oh, yes! Nice. So, nice. there you go. God, I love Very him so nice. much. Thanks. He's so good. Not so much Daleks, more of a Cylon thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? Which is better? Which? Chris, close, Chris, could you close your ears real oh, quick? Can you oh, no. Okay, close they're closed. Can you close your ears? Okay. Uh, Paul, Battlestar is way better than Doctor Who. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> Wait, actually, Mike, Sorry. can you talk us uh, yeah. talk to us about like the group, the the party crew? <clears throat> oh, who are these I, people? I can talk. To... Okay, I need to so bring up the, the IMDb page to get all their names. Don't yeah, bother. I can't do that, but yeah. I can talk about the tits. That's fine. Um, so, so, so there's a group of people who would, like work at a store. And they're they're like they decide they're gonna party after hours, right? Like you do. I used to work in a mall. Do I, like you I do customer service at the mall? And I me used too. To, Paul, you visited Paul. You visited me too, didn't you? Back in Peoria, right? I visited you, and then you got me my job in customer yeah. service at the mall. Yeah, it, we. So Paul and I are big mall. We know what's up in the mall. Okay. And and so so I understand these people. You make friends working in a mall. It's weird because there's a bunch of different stores. But you all do the same kind of shit, right? Like, you all hate your bosses. You all do whatever. You, you all you try to avoid friends. the kill bots. Yeah, yeah. you all, yeah. You, uh, the thing. kill bots are there. And then, and then there's the old man who makes a really good venison chili, and you're like, well, I want to hang out with that guy, but, like, not the kill bots. <laughs> Paul knows literally what I'm talking about. That fucking dude was amazing. Yeah. Anyway, um, no, but this movie has, like, what, three, is it three couples at the beginning who mm. are... Uh, fucking like they're fucking. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, they're all like, partying so, in the furniture so, store. This is why you really yeah, should never store. lay they're... down on the uh, the demo beds or couches at a furniture store. No, yeah, just, they're just they're really getting know. into it. So there's a handful of groups that are that are cute and and friendly, and then, let's put it that way. And then there is the obvious couple who is Rick Moranis and <laughs> no, I don't know. not in this film. <laughs> Excuse you? What? No? Who Ferdy. said no? Yeah, he's it's, the... Uh, his name is... It's Those are the only two I know. Ferdy and Allison. Yeah, he's... It, no, well, but... Well, to help, to help, oh, you well, keep no them, to help you keep them straight, that Ferdy is the handsome preppy guy from Head of the Class. And he was in Karate. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, TV of course. Show, yeah. Everyone listening to this podcast knows what that means. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> so okay, so not literally Rick Moranis, but like someone right. who looks like okay. Rick Moranis. All right, Tony and then and, and then a, a nerd woman who who they are like playing around. They, they are the main characters effectively of the movie, um, and that's whatever. Everyone else is fucking. You see titties from everyone else, and you see <laughs> we don't see ding dongs. I wish I saw more ding dongs to be honest, but you don't see any ding dongs. Mike, can I but, can I ask you a, qu a quick question? Uh huh. Have you been drinking a little bit? A little bit. Okay. Nope, I'm hey, cutting that out. Just making sure. <laughs> hey, hey, here, hey, here, <laughs> here's, Mike, Paul, here's a question for you. I really wanted to know about this. Like, I worked at a mall for about a month, and it didn't really count. I didn't really get to see the insides of how things worked. And you guys sound like you've got a sure. lot more experience. But was there really, like, some sort of, like, locker room or changing room where girls could go to change outfits and walk around topless at the mall? No. Commentary comment. <laughs> oh, 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 that, oh, that wow. sound means Holy Paul shit. has a commentary I'm comment. I'm so comment. Guys, I am so excited about this commentary comment shit Paul has. It's so good. So straight <laughs> Please, up, Paul. 
Roger Corman said, put some titties in this movie. <laughs> so <laughs> the only way they could figure out how to do that is to do like a locker room scene. But there wasn't really a locker room in the mall. So it was just like a hallway corridor in the mall that they set up to make it look like that. Holy shit. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they all they had to shoot after hours too, right? Like they couldn't That's shoot so weird. in the they mall shot, while it was open. They shot for 20 days from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. Oof, that's tough. Yep. Yeah, this and they makes had so to, much sense. They had to load out all of their equipment every single night so that there was no trace of them even having been there for when the mall opened up. So they had to load their gear and unload their gear into a truck every single day. That's what, no, wow, that's amazing. That's yeah. So let me give you a couple quick points before we get into the, uh, the mayhem here. Um, mm-hmm. So we have the locker room. It's established <laughs> that Allison and Ferdy are going on the blind date. We see another scientist. Paul, you mentioned how the bot, the killbots, like hid bodies and stuff. They hid the first scientist, and I think that was Chris. But yeah. oh, Chris said that. Okay. Yeah, way to take credit um, for that, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> let's get real de- detailed well, about this fucking shit. We want Paul to stick around, so make sure he's happy. So we're gonna give him credit. Yeah, he. Yeah. Um, well, whatever. So. <laughs> So the another scientist dies. That's the one where he like relaxes and the uh, robots activate behind him, and he oh, like yeah. looks around, and and then the gra- <laughs> like a grappling hook or something hits him in the neck and kills him. It's it's really it's really drawn out and tense because you know those killbots are going to get him at some point. But it's so good. But it's great. It's Wait, did I get my really scientists well. mixed up? No, I mean just both scientists die. I think is the point. Okay. Um. So, back to the party. The Killbots have activated. There's eight people. Ferdy and Allison meet. They kind of hit it off. You know, they're both kind of nerds. The robots yeah. go online. Um, and it's so fucking good. This movie's so good. Yeah, there's such a great line here, because in the furniture store, when people are starting to get it on, one of the... Yeah. Um, I think it's one of the guys says... You smell like pepperoni. <laughs> Yeah, baby. My dick got so hard when he said that. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's the way you feel. Wait a minute. What? I like pepperoni. <laughs> so she takes her clothes off. In that case. Yeah, that was weird. But, you know, but the whole the whole comment makes sense because she works at, we see earlier that she worked at a pizza God place. God damn it. So... Another thing, interesting thing happens here, which I was kind of thrown off by, which but I guess in a pleasant way, we see the janitor cleaning up. Dick Miller in the house. Well, it looks like God. chocolate ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. Wait, the child, the child ice cream or the, wait, what? No, no, no. It looks like, tr- like when the janitor is, is mopping up it, and he's like running the mop through the bucket and everything, it, that is not water. It looks like <laughs> chocolate ice cream. One thing I really like about this scene is the killbot comes up to him. <laughs> I swear it just fucks with him because it just purposefully <laughs> yeah. runs over the bucket and knocks it over. You clumsy son of a bitch! Look what you did! I ought to turn you into scrap metal for this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, would you guys agree that he's probably the most recognizable actor in the movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Dick Miller's been in a ton of stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. Jay, I know that you're trying to like you know burn through a little bit of this, but can we back up for just one second? Sure. I'm trying to figure out. You know, they're they're having this, like, party, like this after-hours party in the mall, right? That's the, yeah. the idea that, like, after the mall closes, we're going to party, right? Yep. So, like, the mall closes at 9, but then they know that the, that the Star Trek security doors close at, like, midnight, right? And they can't get out? Yeah. So, like, are they, is the plan to only party for, like... A couple hours and then leave. I, I think it was. That's, that's what it seemed like. That that was Ferdy's plan like, anyway. They were he was watching yeah, a movie was, with his girl and was like, "Hey, the mall's gonna lock up in like an hour. We should go." Yeah, he's like, "I'll take you home." I guess so. It just doesn't seem like a very fun party to be like, "Okay, we got you know like two and a half hours to do all this." Paul, to be honest, did it look like a very fun party at all anyway? <laughs> no, it looks <laughs> shitty. Uh, well, no, no. I well, would hold say on yes, now. Actually. But for the people in that party, I think. Oh they well, had yeah, they, they perfectly had a, fine yeah. time. They had a banging good people time. People were getting laid. You smell like pepperoni. So okay, Chris, can you talk about um, talk about Dick Miller a little bit, Janitor Dick Miller? And you were talking about how the robot's messing with him. Yeah, the robot just knocked over his bucket of sludgy water, whatever Mike's. <laughs> <laughs> and how does he die? 
Well, uh, I, because I was surprised that he died. I thought he was yeah. going to be a main character in the film because he <laughs> was the most recognizable person. He, he should have been. He should have been. But yeah, one of the killbots throws its little uh, stun gun kind of electrodes out at him. Totally misses. And so Dick Miller's like, You bastards are going to be trouble when he first brought you in here. Ah, 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 ah. And, uh, <laughs> and electrocuted him because he's standing right in, uh, apparently standing barefoot in the puddle. Thank you. Have a nice day. This this movie really kind of goes along because we're not even we're not even a half hour into the movie yet. This is it. Fucking great. rolls, man. It's so good. God damn. Who it, wants so the next good. death? This this is a this is a pretty good one. <laughs> because the deaths just start happening. I'll take it. Okay, go ahead, Paul. Commentary comment. <laughs> oh, hold oh. on a second. Okay. Oh shit. Uh, uh, well, I guess I want to point out that while we're still in the furniture store. Um, the, there's a movie playing, uh, and, and the movie playing inside the furniture store is Roger Corman's Attack of the Crab Monsters, which starred yeah. Mel Wells, who also played the cigarette smoking cook in Chopping Mall. Oh, Very so cool. Yeah, yeah. If I could tell you, Paul, when, again, Aaron was watching this with me, she, we saw that part and the movie that was on the screen, and she's like, that's not a real movie, right? <laughs> Like, yeah, it is. Totally oh, yeah, didn't believe. Is. She thought that was just fake footage for the, for the like cheesy <laughs> fake footage for the film. She she needs to watch more Roger Corman. Can I can I, can I just talk about the next guy to die? Seemed like sure. Uh, All right, ahead, yeah, yeah, we talking about numbers. Mike. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that was his name. But he's he's kind of like like a douchey kind of character, like an asshole. But he's he he's popped still, his collar yeah. earlier, right? He's he's yeah. fun, but though. he's really fun. He he's fun. really all the kids are really likable. And actually, Mike, fun, fun fact about Mike, he chews gum in every single <laughs> scene he's in. Yeah. Commentary comment. Oh, this is just a, wow. Ah, yes! God, I love I'm this sorry. bit. It's I so only good. have a few more, I swear. They're it's just so all coming good, though, out Paul. Keep it up. Uh, I love it. Mike was played by John Terleski, uh, who is also the star of Deathstalker 2, by the way. Ooh. And, oh. Jay, you're absolutely right. He's chewing four to five sticks of gum <laughs> at a time oh. in every single one of his scenes. And it was his idea. He brought that to the table. Nice job. So anyway, so 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 the fun thing about Mike is that his girlfriend says she won't need some cigarettes after they finish banging, but she didn't like the camels that Mike thought he saw at the what? cash register. So oh, she you're talking about Mike out. in the movie? Yeah, Mike, Mike in the, the movie. movie. Not, I'm not so confused. Everyone's favorite B yeah, no, his dick tastes like a camel. So it's what okay, so he's got to, sorry, he's, sorry. He's, he's, he's got to go down to the cigarette machine downstairs or down the hall or wherever. Camels? No way. You know I only smoke virgin lights. <laughs> and he's got some money for it, and he's like, God damn. And then the goddamn killbot sneaks up behind him. Okay, that's, yeah, that's and then what I want to get to. That's when he dies, right? They're, they're, that's when he they're dies. not quiet through the entire movie, but this <laughs> one sneaks up behind him. May I see your identification badge, please? Jeez, you little bastards are quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and then, he, and then yeah. he's got. <laughs> he says that great phrase, Watu, Barada, Niktu, okay? <laughs> Everybody shows the thing is bad. Hell yeah. Great little Evil Dead reference. <laughs> Well, and the day the other thing. <laughs> you know, they're obviously having fun with this movie. Oh I my mean, god, it's so much they, fun. They 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 knew that this was going to be they they wanted to make a really good B movie, you know? Yeah. They wanted to make a sort of drive-in movie sort of thing and I, I think they did a damn good job. Oh, for sure. This movie is so fucking tongue in cheek. It's <laughs> so fucking good. But not like not like annoyingly yeah. so, you know? Like they struck the right tone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, did you notice? Did anyone else notice the fucking sporting goods store they bought guns from later? <laughs> yeah. The name of the store? Um, oh, yes, Peck and Paws. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Fuck right, yeah. Peck and Pals. Fucking yeah. <laughs> fucking so Peck and Paws, dude. Like, that's such a good joke. It's <laughs> so good. But hey, I just want to say my favorite thing about the killbots comes in right now when they hit Mike with the sleep dart. Is every time the killbots are about to kill someone, they lift up their little robot arms. And they move in, <laughs> and, they, and they move in like they're looking for a hug. <laughs> Just yeah. lovable little killbots. So to the listener out there, the the arms of these killbots is these those in the eighties they had those like trigger hands that was like they're like little what, pinchers, how do you like that little shit? thin pinchers, the pinchers like robo pinchers that were like, I, I, how do you describe that shit? Like I don't know. But like that's what they had. They had these two like things. <laughs> so Wait, okay. Stupid. We got to talk about Susie now because this is 
amazing. One of the best parts. <laughs> so Mike is gone, and he's been gone for a while. So she goes after him um, oh, through God, the mall yeah. to find out what happened to Mike. And <laughs> she can't find him. She goes down to the cigarette machine, and evidently the robot has propped Mike up by the cigarette <laughs> mis- machine. And it's, he, like, it laid a she trap. notices his throat has been cut. And then the robot comes rolling out of this, like, smoke-filled hallway. <laughs> That's amazing. Shooting lasers. Just so dramatic. God. This is where and she no, starts running. Re- now, remember, those lasers are purely for clearing debris. Yes. That's all if, if you by debris you mean her head. <laughs> That's such a great shot. Oh, my God. <laughs> like head. that was a, honestly a surprise because oh, she's running and like dodging these lasers and and at this point all the other friends in the furniture store go to look through the window to see what's happening and they see her and and dude like her head just pops <laughs> like when it gets hit by a laser it really it's such that a great was, effect too oh, that God, was legitimately a surprise for me i was surprised at how graphic that was I, mean, just, I would say it's boom. easily the best uh, death in the movie. Oh, God. oh easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. She's your favorite person at that point. Like, you like her, you gravitate because you're like, oh, she's pretty hot and like boobs are good and all that kind of stuff. And then her fucking head goes <laughs> pop. And then you go, oh, I guess she's done. And it's good, too. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't oh, even look great. cheesy no. or anything. No, it you, does not look cheesy. Did, did you no. guys notice during the end no. credits, they show everyone's like character yes. and their name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shot they use for her credit. <laughs> That's <laughs> so amazing, dude. It's so amazing. Yes, it's just a frozen shot of her head exploding. <laughs> yeah, like everyone else got fucking normal credit. Like, they're like, hi, I'm smiling at a freeze frame. And then her freeze frame is just her head exploding. It's if, so good. if I have to criticize anything, you know, they kind of set themselves up a little bit for disappointment by doing that because, you know, everything after that in terms of the deaths is just not as cool you know what i mean yeah, oh, you, yeah well you, know, you you have to admit that one dude riding that little trolley thing and banging into it <laughs> and electrocuting himself was pretty good too yes god damn it i almost fucking threw up my fucking beer <laughs> <laughs> so okay now we're at the point where the futuristic steel doors lock now the robots are chasing the oh, kids through like, the mall. They're not just chasing the kids through the mall. They're, like, shooting their lasers like night beasts, like, running through yeah. the forest. Just pew, 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 pew. Oh, and the furniture store gets completely trashed. <laughs> oh, like, it's well, the kids were fucking in there, so obviously it did. Uh, one, one thing that I did notice right here, I don't know if it's just they feel they don't have time or what, but no one really grieves for Susie no. at all. They just kind of no. move on. Yeah, I think it's a time they, thing they because should've. they are, uh, like, imminently going to die. They're and, like, hey, we've got yeah. 45 minutes left. We need to just start killing things left and right. Mike, what happens with the air ducts? So, um, I, I'm a big professional on air ducts. I mean, I we all know I've seen Snake Eater 2, the drug buster, a lot. So, Well, of course. <laughs> I, know about, I know about air ducts uh, quite well. That's why I asked you. Yeah, of course. I, I understand this. Um, so, so the women are like crawling through the air ducts and one of them gets, starts freaking the fuck out. And she can't handle it, so she decides that she's going to go the other way. She drops down into a store. Yeah, and then and then that works out really well for her and the movie ends and it's all good. <laughs> well, but that would mean that we can't talk about the guys in the sporting goods store. Oh, oh you mean Peckinpah's sporting goods store? I do. You mean the ultra violent store? Yes, I mean the ultra violent sporting goods store. The the guys really just want to send those fuckers a Rambo Graham. Let's go send those fuckers a Rambo Graham. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great, dude. I love the tactics here. Like they're not messing around. They just go, they arm up, they grab a can of propane or a tank of propane, and oh, they're shit, ready to go. Oh shit! Where they get the propane? They got a shotgun, an assault it's rifle, so good. and a pistol. Yeah. Yep. They get into an immediate firefight with yeah. one of the robots. Yeah, I saw. I saw. Uh, uh, what's his name? Rick Moranis <laughs> grab that Birdie. propane tank, and I fucking flipped my shit. I I got so excited. This about is that. great yeah. because this is a great movie because the the people trapped they're they're fighting back. They've got a plan and they're just going into action. They're not just hapl- helpless little victims here. They're taking shit into hand. 
Yeah, I have wrote in my notes at this point that like this is a pretty fun group of people, you know, <laughs> yeah. like that they're trying to like come up with plans and stuff. I would totally be trapped in a mall chasing chased by killbots with these people. They're great. And, and Mike, I don't know if you uh picked up on this or not, but the whole like slow motion scene of them walking out with the guns and the propane and everything. Uh -huh. That's a direct homage to uh, The Wild Bunch, which is a Sam Peckinpah movie. Yes, I did catch that. So it good. So, the Peckinpah bit was so fucking good. Yeah. Like it was so intentional. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, the uh, they do use a propane tank on the robot, though. They They shoot robot number one, they throw a, a propane tank underneath him and shoot it. But he doesn't stay down for very long. Yeah. Well, that, that does lead me to one of my favorite, another of my favorite lines. <laughs> it's Ferdy as he sees some sort of liquid, I guess. They don't show it, but he sees some liquid leaking out of the robot. So what's that? One of the other guys just says, robot blood. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they got to be feeling pretty good after they take out that first uh, kill bot. They're rigging propane tanks to the elevator. So this is the thing I like in this scene. Everybody's useful. Like yeah. the other, the guy, yeah. the two guys that are left are like working on the propane tanks. Ferdy's down there programming the elevator to do what exactly? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but they, they've got a plan, right? Commentary comment. Keep in mind that this entire movie was shot in a real functional mall, as you can tell by the look of it. Uh oh. Uh, uh oh. This, uh -oh. <laughs> this was uh -oh. shot uh -oh. in the Sherman Oaks Galleria in Sherman Oaks. What? And. You know, you would think that, like, all this, like, shit that they're blowing up and everything would be a problem. But apparently, the owner of the mall, every time they were like, hey, can we set the floor on fire? He was just like, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Paul. They were totally what? cool with all this stuff going down. Well, okay, that's very important, Paul, because... This leads into plus, just this is a nasty death that happens next. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I know getting your head blown up is a big deal, but I mean, okay. So the robots chasing the girls. The guys are working on the elevator. Um, they the, one of the robots though ends up rolling through flames, right, and mm -hmm. shoots one yeah. of the girls, yeah. and the girl falls, and then the robot shoots the gas can she's carrying. Thank you, and have a nice day. She, her, she just collapses and burns to death on the floor. <laughs> right, well, right in front of her boyfriend, too. That's when right, bring yes. her screams, bring the guys back to the yard. And they just... And he's like, my girlfriend's burning to death. Right in front of my face. That was just brutal, man. Like, that was a rough one. She was, was watching Actually, this woman yeah. smoked to death on the floor. The the uh, the M I won't do a commentary thing here, but the MPAA did make them cut that scene down because they're just like, dude, like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm not surprised. They had it yeah. in way too long, so they made them they made them cut it down. Oh Fuck. They do end up luring a robot into the elevator, and then the guy, one of the guys named Rick just has like a total boss jumps and jumps from the top of the elevator oh God, was off a, of it. I thought he was dead for sure. But. Yeah. You know, he, he makes it through after watching his Hold girlfriend burn to death. Um, and then oh God, Allison, our nerdy girl, shoots the tank because she her dad was a Marine. <clears throat> well, that's and, why uh, she's so accurate. Yes. And the elevator drops. And I believe this is the first time one of the robots actually dies, right? Yeah, yep. This was the first actual yeah. kill. Yeah, the first one they thought was dead. He picks himself right. up later. And then we get like a little bit of a down scene just for a minute where the gang is hiding out in the diner. And we see like the Galaxy of Terror movie poster and everything. Um, Best movie. And, and and this was the point where oh, I was thinking to myself, what what what's to, to dislike about this movie? It's so good. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Literally nothing. Um, There's nothing to dislike about this movie. I know. So... We get Greg. Greg is one of the guys that's left. He's thinking about suicide. Oh, yeah, because then... he just saw his girlfriend burn to death. Right. And he? He, that, uh, yeah, that upset him quite a bit. So he's thinking about uh, not continuing. But then Ferdy knows that there's this master computer up on level three. And uh, Greg has a pretty good line at this point. The guy who was contemplating suicide. He says, Computer, huh? Let's go trash the fucker. 
<laughs> pretty good. This movie has some some nice little one liners like that. It does. Yeah. And so now Greg is is who we haven't mentioned by name until now, but now he's all in on this plan to destroy the computer. So he's running ahead. Oh, he runs. He runs right up those escalators, right and in, right into the arms of another killbot. His last line is, Come on, guys, the coast is clear! Come on, guys, the coast is clear. <laughs> and the killbot just chucks him down four floors. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the one he throws, it falls over the edge, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's so good. It is. And so then we have an all-out chase again. The action is back. Rick Moranis is still okay. It's fine. He is. The girls are okay. But Allison does get shot oh, by yeah. a laser. Oh, no. She's not dead. Oh, But she gets shot. God. Um, they start cutting through the doors with the lasers. They're thinking about splitting up. They, they, they don't know what to do. Oh, well, they, they set up some mannequins because those killbots, they're just programmed to, I, I assume they're programmed to just identify a vague human shape. Mannequins are vaguely human shaped. True. So they totally, True. totally trick the killbots. They put some mirrors behind it and the killbot shoots itself, I guess. That was pretty cool. That was pretty clever. Pretty clever. Uh, until it starts going crazy, shooting lasers completely wildly. And, uh... <laughs> and how how does this one get killed? Because this was this was a sad moment. One of our one of our girls yeah, gets yeah. shot in the gut. Yeah, she's Linda down. She gets uh. shot, and then her boyfriend Rick gets. This is the one where he gets on some sort of cart. I think the yeah. the, the killbot is sort of like electrified at this point. And it's it's kind of a suicide thing yeah, as well. Oh yeah, kind of. He just gets it in is, a little yeah. cart. He gets in this some little cart that's standing, sitting next to it, and drives it right into the killbot, and he gets electrocuted himself. It's he does, but this is the second day. killbot yeah. kill. Yeah. So he he takes himself he out gave and his takes life, down a bot. But yeah, he saved Ferdy and uh, the other chick. <laughs> and and now we're we're down to Ferdy and Allison, our main yeah, two Allison, people. Yeah, just the the nerdy couple. I'm not sure why here. But Ferdy and Allison have to split up to look for the big computer. <laughs> well, hey, well, because because if they didn't split up, then we wouldn't realize that the mall has a closet full of scrap metal. Oh, my God. That's so amazing. <laughs> Allison opens the door and all this junk falls out and she attacks the junk. Commentary <laughs> comment. Oh, we have a commentary oh, comment. Sure. Right. Oh, God, I love all, this bit. All of that scrap metal was from Roger Corman's Battle Beyond the Stars. Mm. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! That is a B movie, uh, a twenty-four hour B movie marathon uh, alumnus. It is it indeed. Yeah, it was just sitting around in the back lot, and they're like, "We need stuff to put in here," so they just took all of it. <laughs> so they just went to the mall owner, and they're like, "Can we jam all this garbage into your closet here?" He's like, "Yeah, sure." And, yeah, and the guy fine. was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sounds fine. good." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is right after they set a woman on fire on the in the middle of the floor. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. So she Son walks into bitch. she walks into a storage room, and our last killbot sneaks up behind her, and she <laughs> blasts are it sneaky. in the face. Those things are fucking they are quiet sneaky. when they want to be. So they're trying to fight it. There's a laser malfunction. Yeah. And so this this killbot can't shoot at them. I like. Okay, so Ferdy is on the scene. He throws a fire extinguisher at the robots. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the fire extinguisher. And the robot oh just God. chucks it right back at him and hits him in the God head. God damn it, it's so good. Oh my God. Holy Desperate fuck. measures. That was that was my favorite kill. <laughs> oh, chucks damn chucks it. the fire extinguisher back at Ferdy. Yep, at Ferdy. That's so amazing. He, he's on the floor, there's blood behind his head. So Allison ends up hiding in a in a pet store. That, oh like, God, I forgot. Ran- Rancho's fucking climb all over her is so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's so good. Those ranchos just like climb, climb, climb. And they're, she's like trying to be not, oh my God, it's so good. Eventually she runs out of the store. It's still chasing her. She ends up dangling off the second floor <laughs> to hide from it. She ends up falling through a tent and then and on, sees a paint some store. padding or something. Oh, the paint. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tent like down in the bottom. And then, yeah, she doesn't get real hurt or anything. She's injured but not not terribly well hey before before we get into this can we mention when they the girls are make getting their gas the gasoline out of the store that she manages to toss or she tucks a flare into her cleavage very important Mm -hmm. it's a very important moment because when you when you tuck a flare into your cleavage in act one you gotta gotta use that flare in the cleavage yeah Yeah. by act three three. so uh how does that happen Hmm. well she spills a bunch of paint everywhere (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I guess she's 
to spill some turpentine or some sort of oil thing that's uh, maybe flammable onto the floor also and lures the kill bot into that very spot where now it's got no traction it's just it's got those treads just it's sliding everywhere just sliding everywhere it can't move it's <laughs> bad news bears buddy <laughs> and so she t- chucks that uh that flare right into it and my god this hardware store explodes <laughs> like it was hit with a nuclear bomb yeah, I mean, okay, maybe it's flammable, but is it explosive like oh that? Oh my god! Well, I think hardware stores are pretty uh, explosive, so. Yeah, and she, she also gets to throw the uh, killbots line right back at it. Oh. <laughs> Have a nice day. Oh, so good. So, so she survives, good. right? Like, so this actually kills the last killbot, right? Yeah. It's just too bad that uh, it's only her, you know, that her boyfriend didn't survive. Wait a minute. Ferdy is alive. He's got Yay. He's, he's got a bloody roll of toilet paper. Yes. <laughs> a full a full oh, roll God, of does. bloody toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't oh, even and then think about that. Yeah. And then there's literally 15 minutes of credits. Yeah. They well, they run to each other and they embrace. Commentary comment. Oh, we have a commentary. Oh shit. Oh nice. The uh, the catering on Chopping Mall, it was not good. It was a lot of spicy <laughs> uh, Cajun food that they had oh, to eat at no. 2 in the morning. Oh, I don't Lord. believe this. Paul. I think you've run out of commentary comments because it's the end. No, of that's movie. 100% true. Hey, Paul. 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 Yeah. Paul. Paul. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> love you too, bud. <laughs> Allison and Ferdy run up to each other. They embrace. There is no robot that comes out at the end. Everything ends on a happy note. And we've talked about the credits. Everybody gets their own like little freeze frame credit shot. It's definitely wa- worth it to watch Susie Slater's credits. It's that- oh, it's so weird. It's so weird. It's Everyone has a normal thing. And then she gets fucked over with a head explode. It doesn't make sense. Anybody watch post credits? Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to say that's kind of like the, the credits of the Doll Squad, where the one girl, you know, last week, her credit was her <laughs> getting shot and dangling from the, the coat oh, yeah. yeah, that is. Yeah, they <laughs> fucked her over two movies too. in yeah, a row right. we've watched where someone gets the shitty yeah. coat. That's that was fair. last week, huh? That was la- well, two weeks that ago. Was, well, two weeks ago, technically. <laughs> we released every other week, so, yeah. Huh. It's just the Killbot saying, have a nice day. Rating time. I'm real interested to see what happens with the ratings here. Um, let's see. Which one of you shoppers wants to go first? How about we start with Chris? Oh, boy. I'm, I'm just going to say the last note I have on my, in my notes here um, really just says it all. Damn, this movie was fun as fuck. So, <laughs> hey, I'm giving it 90, 90 killbot lasers. Is that what we're, we're rating it as? Sure, we'll rate it in Killbot lasers. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, debris lasers. Debris I'm lasers. Gonna, I'm giving it. <laughs> I'm Great. Give it, okay, ninety debris I'm lasers. Give it ninety Very debris nice. lasers. Very nice, uh, Paul. Yeah, I agree completely. It was a lot of fun. Um, just really one of those classic '80s B movies that. Uh, has a little bit of a throwback feel to it, even for the 80s, you know? They're sort of trying to give it kind of a drive-in vibe, which I really appreciate. Um, I would say the only thing that uh, I could really, you know, criticize is that there's maybe one too many uh, valleys in terms of peaks and valleys. You know, it kind of dips down and there's some quiet scenes, and I thought maybe there was just a little too much of that. But overall... Super, super fun. I love Jim Wynerski movies, um, and this is a prime example. So I'll say, you know what? This movie was shot in 1984, so I will go 84 debris lasers. Pew, pew, pew. Awesome. (laughs) Mike, how many debris lasers do you give Chopping Mall? I'll tell you that. I popped a can right there. Um, So this movie... (sighs) I don't think it lets down at any point. This movie is so much fucking fun. <laughs> it is exactly what you want at every point of the movie. Rick Moranis is great in it. And it's so good. <laughs> and so those, the, those E.T. Robos are so good. It's so much fun. Um, fuck it. 100. What? Wow. No. Wow. 100. Yeah. Fuck off. 
No, no. everyone should see it. Everyone should see this fucking movie. It's movie's fucking amazing. It's so much fun. Wow. Like I saw this. I saw this. Not when it came out, but I saw it when I was in college and like. 2000 or whatever, and it was fucking. I loved every second of it then, and I love every second of it now. It's fucking amazing. Wow, everything about it is is stupid in the best way. It's so fucking good. And yeah, a hundred. I want to push it up that way. I want a hundred on there. I want gold glitter on my fucking. Icon. You got it. So go. You got it. Go to our fucking website and look at my fucking thing. It's got glitter on it, assholes. So don't be an asshole. Well, this is that's this season, amazing. That's the second 100 score of the season. Yeah, Mike and amazing. I have traded 100. Yeah. Because why not? It's fucking amazing. It's true. Okay. So mine, my rating, I, I completely agree. I love Jim Winerski. He's great. I, I love the pacing of this movie. It's so yeah. fast. Oh, yeah. And, it's, and it's yet so it's so good. entertaining. And yeah. the characters, like we mentioned, they fight back and they have plans. They're not just, you know, weaklings that die. You know, like they're... Yeah. They're entertaining, and you, yeah. even though like the the one guy's kind of douchey, like he's funny, and he's you want to see him likable, succeed. Yeah. Everybody's like mm-hmm. everyone is likable in their own way, and mm-hmm. yeah, I just thought like it's so much fun from beginning to end, and I, I realized that halfway through, and I'm like, this movie is just amazing, <laughs> like it's so great. So I'm gonna. Yeah. I, I'm going to go 95. Fuck you, Jay. Oh, well, thank well, God. I'm going to go 95 yep. debris lasers. So do you guys think that my piece of criticism it, with with there being too many, like a little too much slow time is, is you don't agree with it really? Well, uh, okay. Uh, there are, I think, two or three points, but my, for, for my money, um, they're so brief. Like the the valleys yeah, the, are so brief. The valleys is not, the valley does, I, don't, I never thought that at any point. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fair so, enough. I mean, eighty four is fine. I mean, obviously, you know? Paul, Paul. No, Paul, you're 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 a human, and you're allowed to Paul, do what you, you want to do. If you give, if you give another movie a low score like this, I'm kicking you off the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> like like, I... like listen. Here's the thing, Paul. If you fucking try, I might take a knife to you. But otherwise, <laughs> I just feel like a lot. Of, well, maybe not always, but sometimes I end up having the the low score, and it's been I don't know. I try not to well, do maybe... that. Well, maybe you're an asshole. How about yeah, that? Maybe we kill bit, you. A little bit. Jim Minerski's great, though. Would I mean, in, did you look at your other film ratings compared to, to what you're giving this? Yeah, I feel okay about it. Okay, you feel okay about your 84? Paul, would you give the amazing Volk? Oh, my God. God, like a 50. <laughs> 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 but it was because it's like I didn't know what to make of it. You know, that was a, that was a oh, really fair, tough one fair. to grade. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one, right? Guys, am I allowed to pick Amazing Bulk again? No, no, no. <laughs> God no. Wait, who is next? By the way, I think that's be me. Chris Hudson. That would be Chris, me, okay. Mr. Chris Hudson. Well, guys, I I'm so thrilled that we got a 100 on Chopping Mall. I think uh, everyone's comments were, were really great. I, I mean, listeners, clearly you can tell we love this movie, so I can't suggest oh, it enough. So Go find it on Amazon. It's an amazing movie. It, it's not even that long. You're not even putting in that much time. You're going to get a lot back. So check out Chopping Mall. Uh, for now, let's turn it over to Chris and see what's coming up next time on Be Movie Mania. On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. All right, so I was going to pick another another 80s movie, but I think the season has been pretty 80s heavy. So I'm going to pick a more recent B-Movie that Ooh, very nice. has a, an 80s feel. Now, I've, I enjoyed this movie. I, well, we'll see what you guys think about it, but uh, it stars Michael Ironsides and a kid with a bicycle. And uh, we're going to watch Turbo Kid. Uh-oh. Oh, oh ah! yes! <laughs> nice. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, okay. So yeah. I've heard a lot oh, of fuck. things about this one. Yeah. I have seen I've Turbo seen Kid. Turbo Kid. I've it seen, is yeah, very I've good. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. So yeah. uh, I think you can watch it. I know you can watch it on Amazon. I think it's also still on Netflix. And, uh, fuck yeah. yeah. So we'll do that next time. Uh, okay, guys. Just a few quick notes for our listeners before we get out of here. Um, If you like our podcast, please consider leaving a nice review and some stars. It really does help us out. Also, don't forget to check out those super cool shirts over on our website. 
Um, we've got a couple designs up now and we're looking to add more in the near future. And lastly, our sixth annual 24 hour B movie marathon is right around the corner. It's Friday, July 27th through Saturday, July 28th. You can watch and interact with us at our special site, bmoviemarathon.com. It will be nuts. I promise you that. So please join us. Until next time, I'm Jason Hulls saying, well, bye. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Another fun store in the mall was called House of Almonds. Oh, yeah, yeah, I noticed, I noticed that one. What do you think they sell? I didn't even think about that. There's no House of Almonds in Illinois, is there? Is that a real thing? Uh, I mean, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I hey, know. Mike, no, Mike, but no, Mike, well, 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 hey, well, hey, well, Mike, what, what do you think what? they sell there? Okay, I don't know what the <laughs> fucking weird thing is going on right now, but like, uh, I don't know if you guys like roasted almonds, but they're kind of the best thing ever. So, like, yeah, I'm way into roasted almonds, and House of Almonds is so really you're, good. So you're saying so they sell like, almonds there? Is that your is that your answer? Yeah, right. roasted almonds probably. Like, you can fuck off. I don't know what what. <laughs> What is happening? Why is there such controversy here? There is no Roasted controversy. Roasted almonds are amazing. I just wanted well, then, to know what they sell at House of Almonds. Well, fucking roasted almonds, dude. God damn it. <laughs> put, we're moving on. <laughs> they put sugar on it and they roast it. It's so fucking good. They're so delicious.